Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Speed Street. Big news day. If you're watching on YouTube, you already see it. Uh, I am wearing a team's clothing. Uh, big announcement day uh, for for not, not only me, um, but also the man who is going to be joining our show uh, today, which I did, uh, when I text him about this, I did not know that there was going to be an announcement today. And today is Tuesday. Uh, my announcement news will be coming. Yeah, it's a news Tuesday. My announcement will be coming out by the time this episode releases. So uh, this is obviously a Wednesday release. We're going to hold it. Normally it goes out at 6 a.m. So you're probably going to be hearing this around 10 a.m. ish. Um, but, uh, but yeah, big news episode. Uh, David Malukas is going to be on our show. He is going to the AJ Foyt racing team. Uh, for 2025 and beyond, it looks like. So let's uh, dive into that. Uh, I myself am doing the rest of the IndyCar season uh, with the Yukos Hollinger Racing Team in the number 78 car. Um, so we can talk about that. Um, very exciting. Lots going on. Um, I mean, this is this is a very, very cool show. So I think we have a lot to talk about. We're going to preview an IndyCar race that I get to be a part of. Uh, this weekend in St. Louis, uh, and it's going to be a great time, I promise you. Uh, and then can't wait to talk to David Malukas. We have not done that interview yet. We were going to be recording that a little bit later today because we are recording normally at 1 p.m. on a Tuesday, and David Malukas' announcement literally came out about nine minutes ago on our time. So uh, so that's very, very cool and fresh to see for the world. Um, and, uh, and yeah, let's get into it. Chase, uh, big news day. Uh, very yeah. excited overall. What do you think? I, I feel like I feel like there's a lot more hype like inside inside of me this morning. Like finding out all this stuff, like how how we were putting together the interview this week. It all falls into place. We you know, and obviously with your news, I think it's the biggest news here on this program, and I think all of our <laughs> listeners would agree. Uh, so that's huge, bro. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a breaking news Tuesday, and uh, I think this is possibly our biggest breaking news show that we've had this season, but. It's uh, it's an exciting time. We're back over racing this weekend, so obviously yes. I'm hype. Um, the Saints won a preseason game. Football's kind of back, so that's cool. Uh, shout out to them, the Rattler. I don't know if if you if you've been keeping up with preseason Spencer football Rattler? and all of your busyness. <laughs> oh yeah, the Rattler. Yeah, yeah, he's here, man. Um, so it's uh, it's been a good it's been a good week. A, a lot going on in NASCAR. Yep. Uh, ton. Ooh, yikes ton going on over there uh yep. wild times so yeah it's just good to see racing back and i'm even happier that we have indycar in st louis this weekend one of my favorite tracks on the entire indycar schedule so uh big show let's do it let's get yeah, into yeah yeah um so yeah there, there's a lot to talk about i also found out last week on twitter that summer break has caused racing twitter to be very bored uh, oh, i found out that uh drivers are not allowed to have Thoughts, feelings, emotions, or any access to Twitter in general. So you're in a glass uh, box. Fa- dude. Found that out. Um, <laughs> didn't know that that was a thing, but uh, boy, were there some people that I don't know at all, and that don't know me at all, who don't even follow me, angry at me. Um, so that was very funny. I'll tell you about uh, my experience. Um, really, just diving into the trying to learn. I was just trying to learn, trying to learn part of the internet, trying to learn how people think. Um, and it was sad. <laughs> it was definitely sad. You can't, you but can't, those people you can't put too much on it. I'm I'm basically explaining it uh, for the folks that you know do listen to the show. Not one of these people that I'm talking about listen to this show. I can promise you that. But uh, but anyway, that was very fun. I think it's much more lighthearted than people uh, are expecting. But boy, when people when they have a shot when they when they want to take a shot at me when they have an opportunity to do that, they always go for it. And I love that because that's what sport is all about. So. Uh, love to see that. Uh, but opinions, thoughts, feelings for athletes, not allowed. So uh, found that out. Uh, all right, let's get into um, the news. So we'll start off with, uh, I guess, my news. Uh, we can we can do that because I guess uh, this is a program that uh, I'm a part of, thankfully. Um, I'm going to do the rest of the season. And everyone's like, oh, like even Portland? And I'm like, well, yeah, because I actually am an IndyCar driver who also is a road course guy. I mean, people deem me as an oval person only, but like I, I mean, literally, can I'm a road course guy too. Yeah, so my best finish in IndyCar, my best finish in IndyCar is still on a street course at road road course. So like, 
I don't know what you want me to tell you, but um, but yeah, it's 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 awesome to be a part of the Yunkos Hollinger Racing Team. Um, Ricardo Yunkos is the is the first one to really take a chance on me when I was like seventeen. Uh, when I was coming out of the Skip Barber National Championship, I obviously won that championship. Then went to the Pro Mazda Series, finished third in that first year. Uh, but I had no money to do the the next year, so. Uh, Ricardo had taken a chance on me to basically, uh, like, he bet on me, essentially. Like, he was like, look, we will do this season, but if you win the championship, you kind of have to, like, help pay us back on what we did. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's a full-on gamble. Uh, I slept in their trailer uh, throughout the season. We didn't spend money on anything except for going to the racetrack. Uh, that helmet above my my shoulder over there, that's from that championship-winning year with Yunkos uh, Racing. Uh, at the time, uh, and and obviously that kind of shot me off into the stratosphere from then on. Uh, won a ton of races that year, uh, won the championship. Uh, that was really, really fun. And I've obviously, I've stayed in touch with Ricardo all the time over the years. Uh, and a lot of those guys at the Yonkos Hollinger team, it's essentially Carlin, which is a team that I am very familiar with. Uh, that pole trophy is from most of those guys that are on that, that team now. Um, that's thanks to them. So a lot of very, very smart people at that team. Um, and obviously, Augustine Canapino is, is, is no longer with uh, the team. We talked a little bit about that last week. Um, and you know what? They need some points. I'm happy to jump in and, and be that guy. Uh, there's, you know, there's five races left, uh, a lot of them ovals. In fact, all of them except one. So uh, Portland is a track that, again, I, I've qualified very well at. I've gotten taken out in the first corner every time I've raced there. So hopefully we get through the first corner this time. Uh, I've qualified in the Fast 12 there. I've qualified better than uh, my teammate when I was at ECR. So, um, so yeah, so definitely uh, excited to get to Portland. Uh, but I tell you what, Portland's going to be a difficult one. It's It's been a long time since I've done a road course uh, in an Indy car. And the IndyCar is completely different. Uh, the hybrid is definitely something that is going to be much more um, uh, much more of a new thing for me to learn, which is fine. Uh, you know, there are people that are obviously, you know, all the folks that have jumped into the coin car have had to do the same thing. So uh, not trying to say that's, uh, you know, any type of uh, excuse, but it's just going to be new. So I, that, that'll that be a bigger learning curve for me to adjust to the hybrid than at an oval. It's a little bit, the hybrid is a little bit less uh, effective at, at an oval at the moment. Uh, at least in the very short time, I've done one test and a quarter or half of an Iowa race with with the hybrid system. So I um, haven't really got much into it yet, but very, very excited to just get in somewhere. Thankful that Ricardo committed to me and we were able to be like, all right, let's do the rest of the season uh, because I think there's a lot of exciting races left this season to do. Uh, starting with St. Louis this week, um, we had a great test there, as we mentioned on the last show. So uh, pumped to get going. Uh, in the 78 car, black and green, my helmet finally matches the car. That'll be the first time in many, many years uh, where all of the colors that I have on my suit and helmet are the same. Um, so, so pretty excited. Um, I, I black and green suits you really well, by the does. way. I, I think the colors go well. I mean, I'm seeing them right Thank now. You. you got a nice bow tie, Chevrolet, right Team there. Chevy. Yep. Yeah, we're we're Even very excited. Bike. So, it's a lot of people that I've worked with before. Um, you know, the thanks to Trevor Carlin, you know, Trevor Carlin gave me a chance uh, years ago to uh, to be a part of his team. Uh, obviously, then that got taken over by by Brad Hollinger and, and Ricardo Yunkos. Um, so I, 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 I cannot wait. That's uh, that's going to be a situation that, again, new technically not really. I mean, it's not real. It's a, not a new team for me since it was Carlin, um, but added to the list. 78 is a new number that I've never been before. So. Uh, add that to the list of numbers that I have been in my career, um, but uh, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, that's 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 about all we can really talk about now because that's all that's happening. So we're going to try to use this as hopefully a springboard into next year. Maybe we would love to obviously be a part of the NTT IndyCar series uh, in the future, um, but also not really sure how that plays out. Uh, so let's get into the Maluka synopsis. First of all, Chase, what do you think of 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 this? Are you happy? Seventy eight well, car. Now I might have a little bit more to talk about on this show. We can we can dive deep. You know, I, I'll say this much. Like I said already, the the black and the green suit you well. It's good colors. Uh, the seventy eight. I mean, 
that number alone really just only thing I can think of is like 1978. What okay. happened in that year? You know, um, I, I don't know. I'll have to do research. Maybe by the time, maybe, maybe some for Ricky Treadway. Maybe we look yeah. at 78. That could 1978 be cool. was my dad's first year in F1. Technically. I mean, I think he did a year, he did a race at the end of 77, but he always says he was in F1 1978 to 82. So could be a go. sign. Could yeah. be a sign. So I like that. And then two, I mean, obviously, you know, watching this season, I mean, we have seen uh, some decent finishes. Roman Grosjean, you're going to be partnered up with him. Yep. So that's a pretty pretty good guy to learn some things from right there. He's done some things in his career. Um, and, and we've seen him have, a, I, I believe it was, he had a pretty decent finish. Um, I, I'm trying to think He's of the He's had a couple track. different good runs this year. Yeah. So Toronto, they, were, they qualified really well. Um, we I think several races they've been – at the front, uh, he's had a lot of top tens. Grosjean has so, um, so yeah, I, I think it's awesome. It, it's mainly about the test. I mean, when when we were at the test working together, um, just a great, great communication. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of opinions about Grosjean. Um, I, I don't see it. I mean, I mean, I, I understand why. Uh, everyone can have their opinions too. I I even had one guy like, it, it's really uh, yeah. There there was some there's some wild internet chatter, and I hadn't even been announced yet. And I, like people were trying to like uh, compare and like contrast and like oh well like if you're learning from Grosjean and Canapino, like that's why I was like, what are you guys talking about? Like, I was yeah, like, it was a bored time. Like I you said, what, we were some very people, bored. Yeah, some people on the weeks. internet are just completely out to lunch. But again, it's yeah. a great world, and I love that. So it is. Uh, it's Other very funny to interact had, with people. Especially Have if you, they live in their alternate realities, like we've t- we've we've uh, discussed before, different realities for different folks, and that's oh, people loved that. By the way, it's that like was the multiverse. A, we're in love. we're in Marvel. It's the multiverse. So, this is Marvel now. Well, yeah. speak, I wanted to ask you too, uh, as far as the pit crew. Do you know any of these fellas? Have you got everyone to chat with them? So, I mean, how how are we feeling about the pit dogs over at uh, at, at Yunkos? What what do you what do you think? Feeling good. Everyone is. Uh, Mo- like 80% of the team I've worked with before. So 80 to 80 to 90, maybe. Um, so pretty cool uh, uh, to be there. Everything looks good. We're loading up the car uh, tomorrow, uh, getting everything ready to go. Uh, it's just going to be so nice to go racing again, uh, especially love at it. a track that that I love. This this St. Louis event is such a good one. Um, yes. It, it's, shout it's, out it's, Chris it's a, Blair. Yes, the, shout out Chris squad. Blair. Everyone at Worldwide Technology Raceway. Now, we're going to get to our event preview. We're going to do some podium picks. We're going to do top three picks. Maybe we can discuss a little bit more of the race details there. But let's get into uh, David Malukas, who is going to be on our show. So cannot wait to talk about this, this new deal with him. Um, but let's talk a little bit about what this does to the field. For for me this morning, I, I got a text this morning that was like, hey, Foyt's doing a driver announcement at one. I was like, What? I had not read this article that came out recently, a uh, Racer Magazine article uh, that that was talking about Malukas's future plans. I didn't know this. There's there's a lot of rumors, and and there's so like this is the I think going to be the craziest silly season, or at least from like let's say May until May, the like this May from this year till May of 2025, probably the craziest 12 month period that I can remember in any car. Um, because you know, if if this charter system gets announced, th- there's a potential that we see less cars overall. Like right now, if we have 27 full time cars and then you add two Prema cars, that's 29. I actually don't think that's possible. So I I think we're gonna have a situation where uh teams are gonna have to like the five cars at Ganassi, they're gonna have to consolidate somewhere. They're gonna have yeah. to maybe move someone, kick someone out. Maybe run a car that's not chartered. I I, I don't know, um, but there there's there's oh, there's been talk of you know them partnering with another team. You know, does MSR partner with someone else other than Andretti? You know, there, there's there's all these potential rumors that that are floating around. That's kind of how NASCAR does it too. So to me, that would probably make the most sense. Yeah. So so there's. And and for me, I thought David Malukas like could be a MSR guy for forever now, right? Like it seems like they have yeah. a good relationship. Um, but I think David is very smart. I'm gonna talk to him about this too in our interview. But I think David is very smart. I think Foyt 
right now that that Stingray Bob seat, the Stingray Circulation Program, I think that seat is for sure the most coveted seat in in all of IndyCar right now, aside from obviously Penske, Ganassi, and Andretti, um, and McLaren, um, because it is that connection to Penske. And I know for a fact, after you know the connections that I have in that world and the people that I've worked with, who are well, Joseph's Joseph's engineer was my engineer at Carlin, so like know him very well. There's a very good integration there. And Michael Cannon is at Foyt, very smart guy. Uh, they've got a lot of other really incredible people that I, that I really this year, it seems to be every time I show up to the track, they've hired another person that I think is a great, like smart person for that team. And, you know, Santino, as we've discussed, good, he's been fast. Talented been driver. Fast. Uh, talented driver. So I, I think Stingray Rob, you know, they didn't actually say whether or not David Malukas was replacing one of them. My thought is that, look, we know that David Malukas does have some support behind him. That's that's not, that's like, that's just, everyone knows that. Um, but he's also a very good driver. So I think for Foyt, it's the perfect scenario. They did need some funding, right? To keep Santino, they needed Stingray's funding, which again, everyone knows the Stingray is only there because he has, you know, enough money to be there, which is great. Um, and if you don't it's know swag. that. He, he has the looks, you know. Well, look. yeah, that definitely didn't do anything. But if <laughs> if if you if you didn't know that, well, welcome to motorsport. Uh, that's how it worked. So uh, you know what, Stingray, I hope from maybe he goes and uh, maybe he drive does like an Indy five hundred only thing and goes like IMSA racing. I I don't know. I feel like he could fit in great there. He's learned a lot from IndyCar land and uh, could probably have a, a twenty year career as you know a uh, uh, good in IMSA or maybe I I don't know. Um, but, but he, you know, his career is definitely not over. I don't believe, but, uh, it, it just seemed like Foyt probably found their perfect match. We've got some funding that we need, but also a really good driver and that's the perfect combination. So I, I think that's, uh, great for them. Very smart from David Malukas, Penske connection. Who's going to retire from Penske maybe in the next couple of years? Maybe Will Power. Who knows? There's going to be a Penske open seat, I believe, in the next two to three years. Not next year. We obviously know the power everyone's sorted out for 2025. But I think, you know, for 2026, you know, does David try to put himself in that window? Who knows? You know, David Malukas's uh, dad, part of HMD Motorsports, which Miles Rowe is a part of. Miles Rowe supported by Penske. There's all these little interconnecting webs that is just, it's it makes sense. So, I think this is an incredibly smart move from both uh, David Malukas and from AJ Foyt Racing, Larry Foyt. Uh, and let's say Santino is still there next year. Uh, boy, that's gonna the that is gonna create some real competition for Santino because we are gonna we are gonna see two young hot shots going at it. Uh, one that has a highly dangerous anger problem, and the other who is just Got the the memes, he's got the vibes, and he's got a lot of talent, David Malouk. And he still so, owes me a dance competition, and we're going to talk about you that on today's show. Exactly. So I think when you look at all the details of this, um, I text David, I said, that's smart. I said, that's a, that's a great move. So I believe that that is a, uh, a great situation for him. I believe that that engineering team and where that AJ Foyt team has, has come to uh, is – going to be very impressive to watch next year. So I, I'm very excited to see it. I, I I really am. Yeah, and for me, I, I think the big thing here is like, you know, obviously A.J. Foyt, legend of the game. We know that the Oval program has been well. Santino's ran really good on Ovals. Malukas has had good Oval finishes too. I mean, could be, uh, could be kind of new Oval top dogs brewing maybe in the next couple of years with these with these two guys. So you know, you, you always want to see those old names come back to glory at some point. And, you know, regardless of our thoughts on Santino and, and Malukas, them together, I feel like, are the perfect recipe for success that they probably need it for right now, from my perspective. So uh, I'm really excited about it, and I can't wait to watch them get on the track and see what they put together, not just for the rest of this season, but for 2025. Yeah, well, obviously, like... David is still with MSR for the rest of the year this year. This is only for 2025, but 
Uh, but it's 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 going to be a uh, a very exciting pairing to watch, and maybe there's still changes. I don't know. Maybe maybe Santino doesn't end up there. I like I we we obviously are only speculators. We can only go off of the news that we've got. Um, but uh, David has yeah. been very very competitive with Meyer Shank Racing. Uh, but this also goes to you know the next question: Who ends up at MSR? I, I don't know if I can really talk about all the the. I know a lot about the rumors of what could potentially happen, um, which is which is very interesting. Uh, but we know that that is a very very good seat. But if they if if all these charter systems work out the way they are, you know, a team might need to offload a driver onto someone else. And then if Meyer Shank has a seat open, which they currently do, maybe that is the that is the option. So. You know, if you, can play, you, you can play connect the dots a little bit there and, and kind of see what's going on. Um, but, uh, but, but very, very interesting. So, uh, obviously, we talked about Yuri Vips, too, last week on the show, who's going to be at Portland. So, there'll be 28 cars at Portland. Uh, that'll be kind of wild. That'll be a massive field. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, so I, I, it's crazy news week. Uh, as usual, summer break, everyone got bored, and we come back with news. So, uh, Alexander Rossi obviously officially cleared to be a gateway, which I I think we all sort of knew. Um, but that's great. That's very very exciting. Yes. Uh, we we Al, Alex is going to finish strong, I believe. Hopefully his thumb. Uh, apparently, I'm also going to be on off track the off track podcast uh, this week. So right. I'm going to get to go over and talk to to Tim, Alex, and and uh, and James, uh, Mr. Hedgecliff. So I think I'm literally doing that interview after I do this show, my show. So. Shout if you to listen boys, to the dude. Off Track podcast as well, uh, you probably should either way because it's a great IndyCar podcast with some great uh, great personalities. Um, but that's, yeah, look forward to that also. So thank, thank them for having me on their show. Um, I'm just happy that the thumbs are good for him because, dude, I don't have know what thumbs. I would do yeah. with a rap thumb, man. Like you have like. <laughs> When you really start thinking about like all the things that that you need to have a thumb for, man, you man, really it's important. You, you realize like how much you take them for granted at times. So Isn't that shout crazy? out to thumbs, yeah. man. Like thumbs are important. Uh, my yeah. my my right thumb is like detached. I got some ligament issues with it, and sometimes it's just you, like double flies jointed? away. Yeah, but thumbs are very important, especially for racing. So I, I don't think people realize there's a muscle right in your hand that's like right. In like it's in between your thumb and your pointer finger. That muscle, if you're watching on YouTube, that muscle gets a ton of work. Like that it is a thick, dude. That's a very difficult uh, part of driving the car. Is actually right here. Uh, and and if you're obviously listening to this show, just basically touch that little muscle right before, right below your thumb, and it'll go in. And you're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. like that's that's kind of wild. Like think if you're massaging someone's shoulders. So. Let's get your hands on your on whoever your your maybe significant other, your best wow. friend, uh, who knows who you want to give a massage to. But if you do the little thumb on the shoulders and you do that for a long time, that is a very important muscle for any car racing. Dude, that, oddly enough, I mean, try that for a few hours, guys. Yeah, that, that's exactly. Gonna, your hands gonna be cramped up. Yes. So, all right. I, I I don't know if there's any other new. Obviously, there there was some craziness that happened in NASCAR. There's there's a lot of opinions on that, um, and and again, Check that was our only race to watch. Middle. Like that was <laughs> our only race to watch over the weekend. We're all desperate for more motor racing to watch. Um, I, I think it was a. It, I didn't get to see it. I, I was in Los Angeles uh, with my girlfriend, um, but obviously you we saw the watch? finish. The entire world saw the finish. Uh, saw all the clips. Uh, I I mean, I, I, again, as I mentioned earlier, drivers are not allowed to have thoughts, feel, uh, opinions, or feelings. Uh, or emotions, but uh, my thoughts, feelings, and emotions on that is like, man, I can't do that. Uh, I think, I think I listened to Denny Hamlin's podcast, and D- Denny is right that there does need to be a standard of driving. Like I think right now, uh, even in IndyCar, we have we have lowered our standard a little bit. But you know, if, if you maybe just do a little side side to side contact and kind of push someone out of the way or push them into the grass on a road course. That seems to be okay now in IndyCar because I've obviously that's I've been victimized by that before. I've done it to other people. It's uh, kind of a and, tough and guy move. Yeah, and there's no penalty there. But if you flat out go and wreck someone, that does seem to be the penalty. And so I, I now this is a fun thing to talk about because it's happening in the news. I completely agree that Austin Dillon does not should not have that win. So 
Uh, I, I think that that just, you know what? All right, sorry, you're DQ'd. Same as Joseph in St. Petersburg. Obviously a different type of technical infringement over there, but sorry you lose the win uh, and whoever gets second place or whoever the next finisher was gets the win. That's just, that's just, that that's happened in racing before. That's happened in every form of motor racing. Uh, there are going to be people who agree with it, people who don't. So yeah, uh, that, that's free, my opinion that because I, I agree with Denny and, 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 uh, and a lot of the drivers that were saying, um, you know, there there still has to be a standard. Like, there's right. a lot of people that wreck each other, you know, but but it's it's maybe less pronounced. Um, but that just, that was such a desperate, like, I'm going to just charge him with no break, get to the 22, spin him, and then as he's recovering, oh, no, the 11, I'm going to wreck him too. So, that you know, that was just kind of like a, a bit of a... Big De- let Denny the body set the floor type moment. It's a, it's a, it's a professional sport still. Like, yes, you can go to a demolition derby all you want, but, but this is a professional sport. Like I remember watching a four wide finish, uh, you know, side by side. And I think Atlanta or or Charlotte or somewhere. Yeah. Incredible finish. That's, and that was, that was great racing. Like that was, Hey, side by side, no one had to wreck each other for that. Um, but, uh, yeah, everyone's got an opinion on it, which is okay. So yeah. Yeah, What do you think? I think, I think it's a lot of, uh, I think it's just a lot of the, the, I guess the energy that comes with the three car, like obviously you saw, like we all remember that one night in Bristol in the nineties, you know? So yeah, but that, like th- that's, yeah. but it's yeah. a different situation now. And, and I, I like I said, I'm not going to dive too deep into it. There's a lot of other shows. Like I said, actually detrimental. Denny did a great job, uh, kind of talking through that one. So one, one of our, uh, partner shows, definitely check that out. If, uh, if you're into the NASCAR stuff, but, I uh I just really that some things about the NASCAR race I did want to bring up to you that I thought were awesome. I don't know if you got to check out the option tire. Yep. Uh kind of making some moves that kind of remind me a little bit of IndyCar there. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, obviously yep. we already started off. We had the, the you know the flat bottom of the car. That's something that you had an IndyCar. Yep. Now we've got these new tires. You got these different types of tires. You know, we have the primaries, the reds. So it's like for for me on the from this side of of the ballpark now watching nascar i'm starting to notice a lot of little things that are being implemented into nascar from the indycar realm a little bit and i don't know if what you have to say about that or if you got to really check out what that option tire was able to do for some guys like daniel suarez and and others but it dude it's i love the innovation that's coming there from now and it just seems like it's a little little familiar yeah, but, yeah, no, I mean it is. It it is. They've gone to a car that is uh is more reliant on on the floor. They've gone to a car that they have an option tire now like like us on the road courses. But you also remember we had the red tires last year at St. Louis too. So we had we had two options of tires at St. Louis last year. Um and and again, all of this is for entertainment. Like r- racing it like racing is entertainment. So yeah. There is an element that all of the series are trying to introduce. You know, the reason why Formula One has DRS is to get people to pass each other. Because if Formula One had no DRS, well, there would be even less passing than there is now. And and even the passing that's now is kind of artificial. Um, but the reason why, you know, we have two sets of tires in IndyCar on the road and street courses is because of a strategy change. You can be like, all right, some tires are going to be better in this stint. Some tires are going to be better overall. There's going to be a better tire across the board. How do you make? How do you use that? And the same thing happened in NASCAR on, on at Richmond over the weekend, which I thought I, I think that's a good idea. So again, everyone kind of has their own opinion on that, but uh, but yeah, that was that was uh, that was an interesting one for sure. Yes, um, it was. So before we get to David Malukas, because David's going to be a great interview, I don't want to talk too much about uh, anything else because we've got uh, a, a race coming up, and uh, I want to I want to do some picks. We got we got to get our picks in uh, for the. Uh, Worldwide Technology uh, Raceway uh, event this this Saturday afternoon evening. So Saturday afternoon evening, uh, it's going to be on the USA Network. So let's make sure we all tune into the USA Network. Um, NASCAR got several million folks uh, to watch on the USA Network over the weekend. So we need to make, make sure that we watch on the USA Network. Millions of people can watch things on the USA Network. So uh, let's be sure we tune into that. Uh, I'm trying to get the uh, exact timing here for uh, for the event, and I have a schedule somewhere. I swear. Okay, here it is. All right. So 
Uh, the race time uh, locally uh, will be at... Uh, Drivers start your engines is 5.25 p.m. locally. So that's going to be obviously 6.30, uh, 6.30 green flag um, on the East Coast, East Coast times. Uh, so it'll be an evening race. It won't be dark. Um, I'm excited about but, that. Uh, We're under the lights. Yeah. We're going to get under the lights at some point. Exactly. You know? So that'll be a fun one. So so be sure to uh, tell all your friends about that. Um, it's going to be a great time. But uh, but let's do some picks. Chase, are you ready for let's say a, a top three pick? I've I've been missing. Dude, I've been ready for a picks. week, bro. <laughs> and now I'm in, and so it's weird. Now I'm in the race, so I I, I don't know what to say. But here we go. So uh, would you like to go first? Absolutely. Or would you like me to yeah. go first? So I'll let uh, you go I, first. I'm gonna go first from now. Yeah, you're racing here. You know what I mean? I I, <laughs> I do feel good. I do feel good about that, and I'm excited to see it. I've uh I don't know if I think I've gotten to watch you race one at. A, uh worldwide before. yeah you were there yeah but you were there when it. i was there with ray hall weren't you there last year yeah, yeah. you're right you're right that was you were racing that's yeah it, it's been it time flies so it does i'm looking uh looking right now at the results from 2023 obviously we know scott dixon won this one last year that was the the infamous nine shaved on the chest that was a that was a fun day um <laughs> so i gotta put i gotta put scott dixon back in there uh for that top three um, also, you know, the top three was what Scott Dixon, Pat Award, and Malukas in third for when he was with Dale Coyne. Yes. So I do like Dixon. Another one that I'm looking at, I feel like we're going to, to get to see a little bit more out of Scotty Mack, uh, for this race. So I'm going to have to put him in there now that he's got that oval win, uh, from Iowa. I feel like he's kind of got the, you know, that Smart. The Elf is back. Smart. Um, I do like him as well for this race. And then for a third, I would probably want to lean into. I probably have to say to lean into the Pat Award uh, spectrum, and it's no no harm, no foul. Um, but but I have to look at Pato. I know that he's got this urge right now. Uh, he wants to get another win back on Oval. I think his last Oval win was Iowa of twenty twenty three, I believe. So and that was the Sunday race. So Dixon Award and Scotty Mack, I do have those. That's and a powerhouse lineup. It is. It is. And I don't even know, I, odds wise, I don't even know, but that's who I think is going to win. <laughs> that's a powerhouse right. lineup. I, so I, I think there's a lot of wisdom there. Um, I, I think I have to go with Joseph Newgarden. I, and I know it's an easy pick, but uh, the Oval King, uh, Joseph Newgarden, um, I think he, uh, I mean, he needs it, right? He, he needs it if he's going to make himself feel better about his, his life. Uh, he's eighth in points. Does he even have a chance at winning the championship? Probably not. Um, but boy, if he wins all the rest of the races, he'll at least be close by the time we get to the last one. So what a story that would be, dude. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I do believe that Joseph Newgarden is going to be good. Um, I, I I believe as well that Alexander Rossi is going to be good. I, I'm going to put Alexander Rossi on my podium. Um, I believe this is going to be a very Chevy centric uh, podium. I'm trying to look at other folks, but I just I, I don't see it out of the Ray Hall cars. I actually don't even know if the Ganassi cars are in the best spot because obviously I tested there last week and Linus and Kiffin were there. Kiffin, not really one to look at when it comes to speed, but Linus, you know, he I mean, he hasn't been fast this year, but um, but their cars didn't seem to be quite as quick as we would have expected the Ganassi cars to be. Um, so let's just do uh, Joseph... Alex Rossi. Oh, and you know, I, you know you what? Pick, I'm, I'm going to do Pato. I'm going to do Pato as well. Okay. I, I think I think McLaren is going to occupy several podium spots. So uh, Nolan Siegel was also running at at our test last week, but again, not not really on the pace. So, um, but but uh, usually Alex and Pato always pull something off. I I want to say Colton Herta. I really do. And I think Colton Herta has a high potential for being good. Um, and honestly, in I kind of want to say myself because we were very fast at the test last week. Yeah. But if I don't pick myself and then I get on the podium, then it's hilarious. So uh, so we're going to go with that. That that Pato, Alex, Joseph. It's a very simple top three. Let's hope we get at least one of them. What do you think? I'm going to go ahead and say this about you two. And you're on the track this weekend, brother. And I'm, I'm going to be real. I know, I know where we we've been doing this show all year long. Uh, we we know the journey. 
you got back on track in Iowa. You're on track the rest of the season. Top 10 incoming manifestation yep. time. So I think it's team, highly bro. possible. That's the goal. We don't want to we don't want to finish uh anywhere less than 10. So, uh we're going to be going for it. Uh looking like potentially a a four-stop race. Um it, last year it was it was a three-stop, but you definitely had to save fuel. Uh this year the cars are heavier. There's a little bit more fuel burn. Uh so it it's going to be a f- I don't think you're going to see anyone able to do a three stop unless you get crazy uh, yellows and a lot of uh, fuel save time. So I don't know if there's an, a window of three stopping. I, I, I don't think that even exists anymore. So you're going to see a pretty similar strategy unless you get some very odd accidents at odd times. Uh, so that's kind of my uh, my thought and prediction there. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it, it should be interesting. I really hope it ends up being... Um, a better race than than it could potentially be. Let let's let's set our optimism at high. Optimism's high, um, yeah. but yeah, I always enjoy it. Exactly, optimism is high. So those are our picks. Um, real quick before we get to David Malukas, uh, let's let's dive into a little bit of uh, Twitter catastrophe that happened last week because I think yeah. for some of those folks that supported me, uh, it, it felt like uh, like I needed like to get some like if people were reaching out to me like hey like. Are you okay? Like, don't listen to the to the haters. And <laughs> I, I find this hilarious because I'd like to. And and again, you might not have seen this at all because the original tweet that I responded to got deleted anyway because the guy uh, ended up being a coward and was like, "Oh yeah, you're right. That was probably dumb to say." That's usually um, what happens. But but so <laughs> he, here's here's the thing. If you don't know me on Twitter, I respond to to the haters all the time. Like literally yeah. every week because you out there, dude. Because a, a lot of the times, like it, it's not just responding, but like I'm actually correcting them on false information, right? Like if if you if I have the truth, if I have information that is helpful and I can add it, maybe I will. Uh, or maybe you help me just... with with things I say all the time exactly. uh, when I say things wrong. So it's good. That's all right. We're we're here supporting. So yeah. if I maybe I ask a question. Hey, did you ever think about this? And then it's like. Oh, you're right. That's actually smart, and they'll just go away, right? Or, or something, something of that nature. So, it, it's quite funny. I am, I am fine. I am doing well. Okay, uh, life is good. Uh, there was a moment though last week where I was like, I don't really want to be a part of the internet anymore. This is kind of silly. And then I was <laughs> like, wait, I have a show. I have to do this. This is part of my job. So uh, that th- that was that was what I was feeling. Um, but I also think that people forgot how the for you page works on Twitter. Uh, the problem with a lot of these folks, and and again, everyone is entitled to opinions. That's why this world is so great, because we can get fired up about the people that we cheer for. And I think people thought that I somehow thought that that was not okay. When have we not said, like, I've given my opinion on Santino, but I've also said he's a good driver. So that's an opinion we can have, right? Yeah. But we, I got into this where, like, all of a sudden – I get this, like, there are people starting to tweet about the 78 car, and then there are people saying, like, oh, put me in, because I've got very supportive fans. Like, I appreciate everyone. And so then I'm getting tagged in stuff that I don't even know yet. And because I interact with people on the internet, my For You page is race fans, because I am a race fan. Like, that's what I do. Like, I literally, I interact with fans of racing because I am a fan of racing as of, you know, yesterday I wasn't employed to be a racer, so I am a race fan. So my for you page, which again, a lot of people who again they won't listen to the show, which is fine, don't understand that if 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 something pops up on my for you page, I find Twitter to be a great information source. I like to learn things. That's where I see my new that's where I see like my racing news. But if all of a sudden I see a tweet that's about me, it's a public forum. Of course I can chime in and be like, oh hey, actually that's wrong. Or like, okay, if you if you just want to say that about me, I will respond because it's a public forum. Yeah, so again, people aren't used to that either. No, like, people but are it, not used to that whatsoever from athletes. So like, I do commend and people you won't doing like that. that, which which is fine. There was a lot of communicate, and I started. So I responded to person who tweeted, and honestly, I thought this was a very funny response. And the sad part is, is all these people that ran off on their own narrative. They didn't actually see that the guy responded to my response to him and was like, not going to lie, you got me there. And then it was like, that's funny. Like, hey, great yeah. interaction. 
you hated me. You tweeted out a list of notes, a notes section that was like 28 drivers that are uh, yeah. more qualified to get the Yunko seat than Connor Daly. And then I responded, I responded with amount of people that care about what you think and a screenshot of an empty notes page. And I was like, that was funny. People were laughing. And I thought, you know what? That's funny. I do this all the time. I respond to people all the time. This is not new. And then I, on my, when I go back to my For You page, I am seeing all of these random accounts that, that I don't follow and, and that don't follow me. So don't, they don't know me at all saying that I was uh, uh, punching down to someone. And I was like, what are you talking about? If That's you show what people up, say when you're right, usually. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I no, no, no. Again, that, uh, maybe, you know what? Maybe I made a mistake. Hey, uh, maybe that, like, maybe they then got more tweets from my fans. And, like, when my fans go at people, like, hey, that's that's not good. We don't want any uh, harassing on the internet. But, like, guess what, people? You, like, I get harassed every day. I don't care. Because it's that's part of what we do now. You're showing but people you, what it's like to be a real driver. Dude. But if you You're read it every day, people. if you read it every day, like, are we not supposed to have any feel, feelings about that? And then it's like, well, don't read it. It's like, that's the dumbest thing you could possibly say yeah. to a person who literally has the internet. You can't shut off the at sign. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you, yeah. okay, well, you could mute words. It's like, who is actually going to do that? Like, yeah, I'm going to go to Twitter. I'm lazy. I'm going to go, and I'm going to press the home button. I'm going to see what's refreshed. I'm going to click the add button. What happened today? And, like, the whole the whole story of my life is I've always been authentic, and I respond to fans, both positive and negative, because oftentimes I've actually responded in a way where I'm like, why would you say that? And then I've actually reconciled the whole situation because maybe we both learned. And so... It was very funny. I, I wanted to get into this because I thought it was very hilarious because a couple of the people were tweeting about me like, oh, well, you can't respond to people because that's punching down. And then those people come after us. And then we get, uh, we, then like, then people say mean things to us. And it's like, well, I'm sorry. If you're saying mean things about someone on the internet, you might get some back. That's, we shouldn't be doing this ever, but that's the world that we're in. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, I don't. I don't want anyone. I and and honestly, when my fans like, if, if folks that support me don't go at anyone else, we don't need that. Like, and 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 I I will do it gonna, because they're gonna if you're do it, if you're attacking me, I am able to go. I am able to respond however I want because it's a it's a free world. And I never I never go at people. I'm like I don't like criticize them for who they are or what they believe in. But if they criticize my career. And I said something funny back. You know what? Great. Like that's I I I understand that if I'm going to say that, there is going to be repercussions of that. I get that people will see that. Is it always positive? No. But like it, it's it was so funny to see. I even messaged people privately because I, I I didn't want I wanted to be respectful and be like, hey, help me understand why it's not okay for me to actually say this thing because I would like to learn. And then I get blocked, and I'm like. Hang on a second. I thought we were supposed to have a constructive conversation. If you think that you're smarter than me for not for for me saying what I said, well, I would like to learn. Mind, so I ask, I ask a question. Why can't I? What are we? I thought we were learning. <laughs> so no. Anyway, I, mean, I think it, it's good. It, that we shouldn't the dog be, pack though. You got yeah. the dog pack online. That's what I think you should call your the fan the fan base. No, I on appreciate media. everyone. It, the, yeah. the sad part is is we're, we're not we we don't want to condone any type of going at people for anything. And 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 did I no. do that? Yeah, but I do it in a funny way, and I'm going to go at it because if you're coming at me, I, you know, it's it. I don't understand how, especially if if you come at me with information that really isn't even based on facts, like oh, Connor's guaranteed to finish 27th again, like today. It's like that's not based on facts. Like I've done two IndyCar races this year, and I finished in the top ten in one, and the engine blew up in the other. So like. That's not based on a fact. Like, so it's it's people that, you know, again, I love the blind confidence on the internet. It's very funny. We saw Kevin Durant going at people recently at the Olympics. I almost responded. I said, well, Kevin, oh, Kevin, we're not allowed to do that. And again, the Kevin Durant, not my favorite basketball player. But like, imagine how much hate an NBA player gets every day. Like, dude, you know, 
everyone says, we'll get a social team. And I'm going to respond to every single thing that people uh, said, because I think there's a, there's a point to all this. Am I, am I wrong to engage this much on the internet? Yes, probably. Absolutely. <laughs> but, but if you have drivers that don't ever want to interact with our fan base anymore, then what's the point in using social media? Then it just becomes like, oh, here's my race result. Oh, here's my race result. The most fun part about Twitter for me is like seeing real athletes talk in their own words and interact with people. If you use social media expecting that none of the athletes or the people that you're talking about are going to see it, th- like you tag people so they can see it. That's so, why people use and, and even if you like don't, Twitter or whatever you, you call it. Even if you don't, you know it's possible because it's the internet, unless your profile is private. If you don't want anyone else to see it about, about, uh, apart from your followers, then have a private profile. Then we never know. Then no one cares. So, or then only you and your pals care, which is great. Great little community. But yeah, it's not uh, as fun though. Yeah. Definitely, you, I mean, you know, it's, I, I like to it do was my, just very my, my funny. I'll yeah, make sure. It was shirts, just very things. funny because it was people that like don't even know me at all. Like I saw random like folks that I guess cover like other sports. Like, oh, like that's not very good. Like they created their own story about how like I was talking down to all these people. I was like, I responded to one dude who tweeted something terrible about me. Like that's the media. And baby. his tweet was kind of funny. My tweet was kind of funny. So again, it, it's like all these people then start creating their own narrative on like, oh yeah, like that's really like, oh, Connor being a terrible person. It's like, what are you guys talking about? Like, I'm sorry, but I like to have fun on the internet. I like to throw some stuff back at at, at, at the folks who bring the heat. Uh, that created a ton of people calling me a bunch of terrible names all day. Uh, people didn't like that I could see their tweets on my For You page. The sad part is, is once I engaged with one, all I saw on my For You page, because the entire world was bored, was tweets about Connor Daly. And yeah. I, I can't stop that. So You got to switch to following. That's what I do. And I know, I know, I need to. And again, I'm, an, I'm an idiot, but I like, they're like, you don't use the For You page. And like, sometimes <laughs> I'll swap over to it, but I usually just stay on following. I yeah. get every, all the people I follow in a nice linear order. It's nice. I keep up well, with, you, the, even, with the homies. Like, two Two of the people that came after me, too, I was like, I sent one of them a DM. I was like, I actually like what you put out. Like, you appear on my For You page a lot. And I was like, how How did we get here? I was like, now I won't see their their content anymore because they blocked me for asking a question about why they thought that way. So, it's a sad again, day. there's no healthy debate anymore in America, which is sad. Uh, I wish we could healthily debate people. I wish we could, uh, you know, everyone's allowed to have their opinion. If you hate me, I don't care. But if you come at me, boy, will I say something in response? Because one, because I I have the ability to do that. So uh, you're the one. Other the drivers have the ability Sunday, to do that, dog. huh? I said you're the one in the race car this Sunday, big dog. That's, that's all. Yeah. That's all that matters, brother. Yeah. In the end, sorry, uh, I have a job still, and none of what was said on the internet matters. So uh, maybe maybe they're wrong. <laughs> like because I'm still yeah. getting employed and I have a job, maybe the folks on Twitter are wrong. That's oh, who would have thought? <laughs> so uh, that's funny. Fun anyway, uh, I, I I had to go on a rant about that because I think there were se- I got several very supportive messages from folks, and I appreciate you folks. Um, but please know that this does not this does not affect me in a very negative way. Uh, I I I don't like it. There are a lot of times where I wish I could refresh my ads and just interact with fun people. Um, but but there's a lot there's a lot of terrible things that are said, and no one should be doing that. But no one's going to stop it. There's no there's no policing. There's no penalties for anyone talking any kind of wild smack about people. Uh, so you know what? Uh, we're going to have to deal with it. And that's what being an athlete is. I signed up for this. And uh, that's why it's going to get a little bantery out there. It's going to get a little bantery. So anyway, Chase, that's my... That's my uh, my rant for, uh, for for Twitter for today. I think it was <laughs> a good one. I think it was a good one. You know, I thought keeping, it was fun. Keeping the bills paid over at X, dude. So... <laughs> yeah, I thought it was fun, uh, and I, I tried to learn. I tried to send some messages because I would like to better my own self. How can I better understand? But no one who decided to hate me wanted to chime in and help me out. So I think uh, you know everything there is to know about it all. So yeah. I mean, that's the that's the fun part, right? I mean, that's dude, where I was, you get to have a good time with it. I was bored at the time, and and if I spend this all happened in like a fifteen minute period, and then I'm going outside to ride my bike. Yeah, like that was it. Maybe, so like it was. We need to watch funny. out for the two week off thing. I think that's Dude, what summer break is dangerous. Off. Summer it break is. is dangerous. Very very mm-hmm. dangerous. So 
Uh, the internet tried to have their way with me. Uh, the internet definitely uh, was unsuccessful. Um, if anything, I gained followers and a ton of engagement. So, And breaking news today. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, thank you, everyone. Uh, let's get to David Malukas. A, a great chat. Uh, my four minutes of fun for the four-time Indy 500 champions was spent explaining Twitter beefs. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's get to an amazing interview uh, with uh, David Malukas, the now AJ Foyt racing driver for 2025. But still, remainder of the year, Meyer Shank racing driver, uh, David Malukas. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very, very popular uh, young superstar of the sport uh, who now has a stronger hand as well. He has a strong hand made of iron. Uh, he is a man who has uh, went through stages of employment similar to my life at one point, uh, just kind of in there and then out of there and then back in there. Uh, what a lifestyle. Uh, David Malukas, fresh news today. And honestly, I had texted you a- and I asked you only because actually we were interested in just having you on the show. I did not know that that this announcement was happening today. But boy, are we, do we have fantastic timing. So congratulations on the future at AJ Foy Racing and welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. I was, uh, as soon as you sent that text, you were like already planning everything for for the for today. And I was like, yeah, good timing, Matt. It's like he's, you know, maybe he knew, and maybe he knew, but I guess he just got lucky. So, <laughs> uh, so for me, I feel like I know what the word on the street is. Sometimes I feel like I know what's going on yeah. in the trenches. I did not know this, so I, I, this was a, a brand new surprise. So, well done on that, keeping yeah. it uh, on the low, the low end. Um, I, I mean, I want to talk about your time with obviously MSR because that's been going great, and that's a great group of people. But when did this when did this opportunity first present itself? Was this a goal for a while? Was this something that recently was like, hey, uh, we like all the pieces of the puzzle here. This could be a great fit for the future. Yeah, I mean, we were we started talking, I'd say, a few weeks ago, and uh, we ended up getting everything kind of signed and done over the weekend. Uh, but from an MSR standpoint, I mean, the team's been fantastic for me. I would say it's uh, they kind of almost saved me a little bit in, in my situation. It was pretty rough few months after the injury and being let go and to that i mean it was perfect timing they, they uh-huh. came in they said hey are you ready can you do it and it was right on time for when my hand was going to be ready from the doctor's standpoint and i managed to get back in and i mean you know that you miss you know a season or something in a car and people quickly forget your name so to yep. kind of come back into it <laughs> get results and and to to be back into it with especially with a very good car i was and i mean and they also you know took a risk with me you know they don't know where my hand's going to be at after an injury and of course there's definitely some mistakes and and growing pains trying to get there but you know in toronto i feel like we finally ended up getting a clean race and we got our first top 10 so they saved me there and and it's for for sure their their reasoning of why i end up getting these opportunities yeah and i i before we dive into Foyt, let's talk about what you were mentioning. Uh, I, I think I obviously had a very short stint at that team last year. And still to this day, I think I have some of the most respect and uh, just honestly good friendships from that group. Uh, just just great people, right? A wonderful team of people that want to be successful, but also support their drivers, which I think is is really cool. Um, and and that has to be a, a great environment to get back into because well I can't imagine what you had to go through for the first six months of this year I mean like there was a lot of uh I mean just sad sadness let's just say like it was just sad and to to come back like that and to to have a great first few races obviously again there were a couple things that you know it was looking great okay maybe the finish wasn't what you guys deserved but then Toronto was good and obviously you guys had qualified well I mean that has to be an amazing roller coaster to be on. First of all, listen from from <laughs> as long as I like man after Mid Ohio qualifying P three, I was just like, all right, man, I'm so happy. Like I, it's because that it, you know you had that thought, that overthinking thought that you know is the hand going to be the same? Am I going to drive Dude. the same? Because things have changed, like especially for these first few races where the hand, my left hand's a lot weaker. It doesn't have as much movement. I mean, my right hand is dominating. It's pushing and pulling. Which I've never done that before, and subconsciously trying to figure out and, and change my driving a bit. It was a little bit nerve wracking on, on how the performance was going to be there. But P three finish, I think that was my best qualifying result ever on a road course. 
um, and it's like second race back after like a massive injury. So I was like, okay, that's big, huge. I, honestly, it, it in, in our my world mind. currently, ooh, yeah, yeah it's I hard. cleared my mind, and yeah, I mean, like you said, it's really, really hard. And that was like first race with hybrid too, a lot of new things, which maybe helped me a little bit, you know, a little bit more new to to kind of the rest of the field, but. Yeah, overall, man, results were really good, and um, it's good to just, just just feels really good to be back. Yeah, I mean, it has to be, and and the youth of IndyCar Twitter is also very happy. You've got quite an aggressively passionate following, which is, I think, one of the most important things for our sport ever is to like just keep the vibes high, get all the 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 like everyone that appreciates great internet content. We need to track them. We need to get them to our sport. Um, has it been pretty cool to see the support that you've got this year from from everyone across the web and at the racetracks? Yeah, it's been amazing. Honestly, without all the, that support that I had online, it, it would have been a lot tougher of, of a road for me and, and probably would have probably gone a different direction, to be honest. Like, because of the fans and all that support that I had, it, it was kind of what kept motivating me to keep pushing to know that, you know, to, to keep positive thoughts that the hand will recover, I will be able to get back, something's going to happen. And, you know, things did a lot faster than I expected, and and now we're here. So it's definitely a big play on that part. And, you know, I, I love every single one of my fans. It's uh, it's amazing. We definitely on the same wave, wavelength of comedy. Uh, we definitely can relate to that. And, and it feels good to just kind of be myself online and to be a little bit more unserious. And it's just that's kind of the thing, you know, going into it, I was like, you know, I don't know what to do. And at the end, I, I can be myself and people enjoy that. Well, it's much easier to be that way too when you're good because then, like, if you're if you're you're bringing home podiums and you're qualifying at the front, it's way easier to be that, and people appreciate that. So, before I get into more details about this this future that we've got cooking here, I want to let Chase jump in here because I think you guys need to have a dance off at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's definitely going to happen. Um, well, I'll give I'll give him a little bit more time uh, with his hand, but because we're probably going to break dance. <laughs> Um, but yeah, David, uh, congrats on the big deal, uh, with, with Floyd, man. And like Connor was talking about, you got a lot of stuff going on on the internet and I've been following you a lot closer this year, watching you. I lo- love some of the things I see. Uh, AJ Foyt, long time, uh, in IndyCar, big race team. How do you look to elevate the meme game in 2025 for AJ Foyt? I think Great that's, question. that is a fantastic question. Yeah. Listen, I just hired a, a new 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 PR rep, new social media guy for me mm. for specifically. So we have a lot of content cooking. It's going to be wow. fantastic. So we're going to be bringing that in, obviously, into these last few races, but also into into AJ Foyt next year. So I think it's going to be pretty cool. And I've already talked with everybody over there. Really nice people. Really good. So I'm I'm excited. It's going to be we're going to have a really good group. A lot a lot of content. I love when it. When I was and- there. I wasn't even allowed to have a beard, so I'm excited to know that they're into memes now. So that's that's great news. <laughs> yeah, you got to wear those shades too. By the way, I don't know. Like, there's this photo you have with these like blue shades that look like the Burger King toy. You need, <laughs> okay. you got to wear those. You know what? My I'll, first I'll day, I'll walk in with those. <laughs> Amen, Can't wait man. to see AJ's face. Can't wait to see AJ's face when he sees that. That's going to be amazing. Um, oh boy! Let's talk a little bit about. Uh, I, I did. We, we obviously have already recorded the main part of our show, and I was diving deep on kind of letting people know. I, I, two years ago, this move would have been like yikes, but because I think where this team has gone, the people that are there, uh, it's very evident that there is a very strong connection to Penske, which will probably have a seat becoming available in the in the in the near future, not next year, but twenty twenty six potentially and so on. Obviously, as a young driver, that is the goal. You want to be at Petsky. You want to be at Ganassi, like the the tippy top. Um, is, is that the motivation? Is it people like Michael Cannon, people like Roger Penske, the integration there that's like, hang on a second, We when we look across the board, this is probably, this is, I, I thought it was the most coveted seed in motorsport, and I don't know why people weren't saying that more because of what's going on there. Would you agree? Yeah, for me, we we signed a multi-year deal with AJ Foy, and it's it's a long-term plan for that. And, you know, it's, yeah, like you said, some of that success has definitely come with the Penske Alliance. Um, but I think it helped, you know, from both sides. I think it helped both teams. I mean, you saw what it did for, for the other side. Um, but even before that, I mean, if you look at Foy, their racing results – in ovals, it seemed like they had that performance, especially in the most important one, which was the Indy 500. 
Absolutely. Uh, and yeah. I mean, that was also a, a big, big, big factor going into it. But yeah, for me, I'm I'm ecstatic, man. I think it's going to be fantastic at, at Floyd. So th- this is the big question. When do we figure out who is being replaced? Or is that, uh, I mean, I don't want to get, I don't like to ask questions that might get anyone in trouble. It's a big but is this going to be show. like, we'll figure that out in a later date? Or is it like, you know, you're going to be the 14, the 41, or you're just going to create a new number? Listen, I have no idea. You're gonna have to. You you know everybody. You just go ask. contact Larry. Larry maybe knows. I don't know. I don't know He's anything. He's got a four and a one on his car for sure. They, those two numbers will probably exist. That that's a there's a chance. I Listen, like that. Uh, ask Larry. Larry would know. That's a good point. That's a good point. Well, I I think get Larry on the pod. <laughs> yeah. There's well, Larry. he actually did. Ask, he he might be on the pod at some point. Apparently well, there was him interest then. in Get him on there yeah. and ask him. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah, I was going to ask him about your seat and then I, <laughs> that was about it probably, but I, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens there. I'm excited to see the future there. Um, because seeing AJ Foyt racing back on the podium or, or in victory lane, I think would do a just massive amount for our series for like the legacy of the series for the legacy of the team um and every time they sign someone new it's like even like 2017 like when i was there and then 18 you know tony kanam was there it's like ah oh, when when are they just gonna get back to victory lane like what's what's gonna be that like that race that brings them back um and, and i i assume to be potentially that guy that would be a that would be a huge deal that would be amazing feeling of course. I mean, that was another thing going into it. You know, AJ Foy, it's it's very historical. He's been a part of IndyCar growing up, big, big fan. I mean, you go into the into the museum and all the history behind it, it's it's crazy. I mean, it's you're literally being a part of history. And one of my goals, you know, when you have those like crisis moments of like, what's the point of living? You know, I just, I want to be a part of history. And that's yeah. one of the things. And AJ Foyt is that next step into doing it. So I'm, I'm really excited. And like you said, these last few seasons, things have really been turning around. And uh, I think we're going to be on an upward trajectory. And I think it would be really special to to kind of get it back there and be the first one to do it. That would be amazing. Um, let's talk about the finishing this season. Uh, I will now be joining you uh, on the track, uh, at, which I didn't know until recently as well. So uh, we are both signing contracts recently, which is exciting. Yours is for a more exciting future. Mine is to just keep the lights on this year. So uh, that's going to be fun. Um, but we're gonna we're we're, we're going to get to a great track that you love so well. There's a wild stat that like your average finish at Gateway is like 2.8 or something absurd. So like I, I love the track. It's one of my favorite tracks. Uh, but you have a very fantastic record there as well. So clearly this is this has got to be a big weekend for you to be like, hey, now we're going to be bringing the uh, iron hand up to the podium. Yeah, I, man, I don't know what it is. I wish I knew what was like that special Same. feeling. I don't I, know either, by the way. Yeah, I, I don't know I why I like it either. Magic of <laughs> no, well, I, I know why I love it. It's just like performances were successful. It's yeah. a good vibe. You know, I know I I just don't know why I'm fast. If I, I wish Same. I could figure out why I'm fast, then I can, you know, replicate that on every circuit, you know? Well, as they say, it's easy to know why you're slow. That's for sure. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, but no, man, I'm I'm really excited. This is, uh, I'm always looking forward to this race. Of course, yeah, the average finishing, even through Indy Next, I never got off the podium, which is, is crazy to think about. But uh, yeah, it, it somewhat, you know, puts a little bit of pressure, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to ru- ruin that stat. But uh Either way, I mean, I'm just, I'm so excited. It's always a fun race for me, no matter what. I mean, I think, yeah, this was actually the race where I was singing uh, a few years ago. So yes. I just, I always just have a good time and it's a good vibe. Well, I, I think you have a very good shot at being on the podium. I I, th- I do think, did you get to test there? Have you tested there yet? No, I have not tested. Okay, well, I, I'm very curious. I hope the race... Is good. I I I, t- I got to test there, and I, I I'm a little bit on the fence on hey, what's the tire going to be like and all this. But I hope that we get surprised, and it's a fantastic race as always. Um, there's some fun hybrid integration. We hope. Um, but what are you most looking forward to for these remaining races with Meyer Shank? Because obviously, you know they know you're going, you know, going off into the into the future w- somewhere else, but. I assume, you know, those guys still want as many points as they can get. They want to be finishing strong so they can get into next year at a very, very powerful level. 
what's what's kind of your outlook for the rest of the season? Where where do you think you're going to be best at, other than Gateway? I mean, focus is is definitely on the now. Uh, we have a lot of many many races coming up, a lot of ovals, and I think that's going to be the main focus on is definitely working on a setup for that. Uh, but really, we want to get performances. I have goals, the team have goals, and we're, we have set to go out there. It's not like I'm now all of a sudden I got a deal and I can just relax, like ah oh, whatever, you know, just park it. Like no, I mean at the end of the day, I still want to win every single race I go out there. I want to be competitive. I want to you know create a name for myself, and I want to do that. With no matter what car I'm in. So from from the whole team, our all goals are aligned. We're going to be trying to go for that podium. I love it. Chase, go ahead. Yeah, so, I mean, with that, talking about St. Louis this weekend, um, I, I don't – I personally feel like you just – you have this this magic sauce there. Uh, it, it doesn't really seem to matter what car you're in, what you're doing. The last few races that I've been there, you've been on podium, and – it got me thinking of like maybe a new celebration for you when you're on the podium, maybe anywhere. Um, you know those little tag deck bikes that they make? Okay. Like what if you just broke one like every time? I feel like that would be the way. I feel like okay. that would be the way to do I it. I only know of tech deck skateboards. I didn't know they were tech deck bikes. Made, okay. Yeah, Let Matt Hoffman made them popular a long time ago. So Matt Hoffman like tech deck bikes and tech you just break bikes. one. Just break a bike, dude. Break bike. Break bike. Why? I mean, Why? I mean, just kick it, kick okay. it. We're overcoming. There yeah, you go. So how would I do it? Like literally, just just literally just break it on the podium. They're pretty, yeah, just... they're pretty cheap. So I mean, you could snap them pretty easy. I feel like just putting one in the hand and just just snap it, just break bite, dude. All right. Okay, there's, there's one way to do it. That's that's definitely a celebration. I mean, yeah, okay. probably more Make champagne than anything now. Now that we're all adults, but yeah, <laughs> there that could be <laughs> the way. Too. I yeah, I'm going to have to make sure I don't like get freaked out seeing a bike, even though it's, you know, smaller. <laughs> That's why yeah. I said we overcome, baby. We overcome the bike. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Um, so, David, let's uh, – I, I really appreciate you being on this show because we have had quite a summer break. Can you tell us anything fun about your summer break other than signing a career highlight deal? Did you go anywhere fun? Did you do anything cool? Obviously, we kept ourselves in one piece, which is great news. Uh, it looks like all the other drivers have also kept themselves in one piece. It looks like your teammate Felix Rosenquist drank a lot of beers on his uh, <laughs> summer break. Can you tell us a little bit about yours? Yeah, I uh, well, first week was definitely just relaxing the hand because was the time I joined the season, it was just back to back to back, and hand was it was really uh, getting some aggressive physical therapy, so it was good to kind of <laughs> let it rest for a little bit. Uh, but I just went to went up back to Chicago to go see my family, be all together. I think just all of us together had a bit a bit of a rough start to this year, and now we're on an upward trajectory. So it feels good to all be back together, say hello on happier days, and um, it was really good. I celebrated my grandma's birthday and my dad's birthday, so it was a a lot of good family reunion. I love that. Um, what do you think about the future of our sport? I like this is a very broad question. We have a new Fox deal. We have exciting things going on. I think you are a part of this youth movement that you will be in this sport for far longer than I will be currently as I'm on the other end. But is there exciting things that you've seen this year? Is there a level of, I guess, intensity, but paying attentionness to what you're doing, to what the sport is doing? Do you see bright pastures ahead of us? And and what, what else do you think needs to be done to kind of take our sport to another level. Well, there's been a lot of change happening with within IndyCar these past few seasons, especially recently. Uh, we have hybrid, obviously, like you said, the new Fox deal. Um, we had the 100 Days to Indy come out. A lot of big new things that were coming. And I and I feel like, I mean, the more change, the better. From my side, I'm all going to be for just trying to attract Gen Z, attracting the youth. I mean, that is our future. And those are the people that I connect with. And I think no matter what we do, IndyCar is really special. Like, you know, anytime you bring somebody into IndyCar, they're like, how have I never heard of this? This is incredible. Yes. This is so cool. And I feel like everybody that's in IndyCar, that small factor, everybody wants it to succeed. Everybody knows that it is special. And I think we need to do whatever we possibly can to get the word out, to do everything we possibly can. Social media is going to be king, marketing, everything. I think that's what we need to do because um, I already think we have a special product. Yeah, there's changes that can happen to the series and certain things. And I know drivers definitely have a lot of say on all that. Um, but for me coming into it as a young guy, I've always enjoyed 
watching IndyCar. I enjoy being a part of it. I think it's amazing. All we have to do is just get the word out there. And obviously with my new social guy and social media, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to be meme-ish. We're trying to be Gen Z, a little bit unserious, but some people say like, why are you doing that? But it, it brings the people in and it really Huge. gets con- people connected. Comedy and- is king, bro. Like, exactly. That's the way Comedy it goes. is king. That's and IndyCar, just and what's special with IndyCar, we're just very welcoming. Like any new fans that come in, you can walk to the paddy, you can be with the drivers right before the race start. You're just, you're fully welcome. You can come in and talk and everything's open. And it's just, it really just feels like one giant family. So the more people we can get into it, the better. Now, when you say social guy, are we starting a YouTube channel? Are we doing a lot of TikToks? What's our strategy? Like, what, like, cause there's having a social guy, but then there's also like, are we, I don't, I mean, I've tried to be a social guy myself, but I'm a one man band. So I, I'm trying to put stuff on YouTube. YouTube's super powerful, but like, what what is the plan? What what do what do you want to see the David Malukas channels being you know being looked at and and what is the reaction? What do you want it to be? Look from my side, I always wanted to just to just do things that make me happy, and I want to make sure at the end of the day I'm having a lot of fun with it. And I love creating content. I mean, if you ask anybody in the paddock, I always say yes to everything. I um, yeah. I'm really excited. That's not because I'm on camera. It's just because that's just I'm I'm I love doing it. I love creating content doing different ideas and, and that whole side. But with racing and trying to balance that, man, I do such a bad job of trying to put those two together. And there's just so much <laughs> that I want to do, but I just can't because it's like, well... You also, I, we have a job. Yeah. I have a job. Yeah, I need a <laughs> yeah, race, yeah. you know? So I, yeah, yeah. that's why having the social guy, he's going to be able to help me with creating ideas, getting everything, organizing it, recording it, adding recording windows to do it. But we are planning to do vlogs, YouTube comments, oh. like little short series videos, TikToks, we're doing a bunch of Twitter tweets on X, whatever Twitter it's called tweets, now. nice. Um, yeah. But like a bunch of different ideas, like maybe, you know, going into the car and, and trying to do... We have so many ideas, man. But what were your influences for a lot of this stuff too? I wanted to ask you that, like, like I guess guy, yeah. you love the content side of things. I'm, I'm a content guy myself. So it's like, where did a lot of these comedic influences and things like stem from? I think it's just growing up. I was I was an iPad kid, man. Like I was that kid who just like eating like applesauce and just smearing on the iPad and just ticking my <laughs> nose, just watching everything. Like I love content. I grew up with it. I'm always online, no matter what's going on in the world. I'm like Reddit, everything. Like I am fully on that. Reddit's I read all scary, the, bro. I read Reddit's all scary. the IndyCar stuff too, even the Reddit stuff. You know, I see those yeah. aggressive comments. Like people think Reddit. Oh, yeah. You know, people, we don't see well, it. Hot we right see now. it. Well, I got in trouble last week on Twitter for reading into other comments on my For You page. So you got to watch out for that. You can't can't reply to people with thoughts or feelings or actions. You'll or else never you might get in reply. Trouble. Only on the yeah. burners. So I'm just kidding. Yeah. Just kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, I'm man. Kidding. I'm kidding. I'm man. Kidding. Man. No, I'm see, kidding. I go straight for the reply straight from my account. I don't care now anymore. Put and, a bounty and, out for the burners, dude. Yeah. They're going to burn the scouting now. Yeah. No, I got in trouble. I got in trouble last week, but it's yeah. fine. I learned my lesson. We're, we're moving on. But you're a, so you're a Reddit guy. You like to study what's going on out there. You like to see, like, does you, is your For You page on Twitter, you got a bunch of different race fans. You're like, okay, cool. It's nice to see other people's opinions, thoughts. What are they creating in IndyCar? Is that something that's going on there? Dude, I find all my news just from the fans. And, and yeah. I'm even on, I'm on the IndyCar Discord. I'm always looking through all oh, that stuff. I'm super nice. active. I'm looking. I'm reading. That's how I figure out all these rumors of everybody. People think, but did like, you know this rumor? Did you know me? N- well, no, that <laughs> I knew from you. You know, I knew <laughs> okay. that from you, man. All right, but, uh, but yeah, no. Source. So I've always just, just man, I love being involved and just kind of dealing with all that stuff. But even outside of racing, just everything that's going on in the world, I'm always watching YouTube channels where they're discussing new controversies and topics, and new hot topics. Like I love just being involved in all of that and just knowing what's going on in the world because I don't know. I just I've always been an internet kind of bug, you know gamer video games all that stuff youtube i mean going back to the days of like casey neistat i watched marquez brownlee's youtube videos back when he was like oh, literally wow. a kid like growing up i've watched him <laughs> from everything i've watched all of it dude so i just love it and i think you know just to also create my own content and be a part of that atmosphere is something i've always wanted to do like even if let's say i didn't become a race car driver didn't race i probably still would try to doing it and now that i have a platform and can actually do it I feel like there's a lot of potential there. Bro, IndyCar should get you on like Big Brother or something too. Like we should get you on a reality television show. I, I know that th- we went through a period of time in IndyCar history where that was big. David, you would be our guy. Like I, I think we put you on Big Brother. 
We put you on Survivor, something crazy Survivor. like that. What do you Survivor. think? Throw them in the <laughs> like, Family Guy, dude. I mean, we're gonna have nuts. a lot of crossover with Fox now, dude. It's gonna a, be big. A, a rea- what would be your ideal reality show? Well, listen, talking about shows, Love I, Island. Are we gonna go on that? Like, what's going? Wow. Let's say that. Talking about shows, though, I actually had a show. I can't believe I'm actually gonna like publicly say this, but Uh-oh. if you look it up, it's it's called Cart Life. Um, it was, uh, I was very young, I think like 12 years old, and it was- I think I heard of that. I've heard of that before. Yeah, it was kind of like a dramatized uh, go-kart show. But uh, yeah, so I, I, you know, I've been doing this. And where can people 12. find that just in case they want to watch? <laughs> is this like on I, I don't even HBO know. Max no, or is this no, on no, like God, a dude, Cinemax Plus or no, something you're like gonna that? Have, We're going to have to find it on like a <laughs> Reddit thread, bro. Right? Yeah, <laughs> this, this is on, on Hulu find. 9, the o- the, the, the Nueva or <laughs> <laughs> what a concept I yeah i don't it. know where you can find it it's called car life but uh car it exists life. somewhere i like Archive that don't vine. yeah <laughs> yeah well that's Sword great I, I i think you'd be a perfect candidate for our reality show future so hopefully that happens for you and if not well you're just gonna create your own on youtube so let's, that'd do, be let's fine. do us together you know we'll, we'll do it man I don't know hey, what the heck we're going to do. The YouTube, I'm not well, going on Survivor. Well, you're going to be on these last few races. So, well, I'm definitely not going on Survivor, man. I fell I'll on the bike. So, <laughs> I'll uh, be the director. <laughs> but the last few there. races, well, come on. You'll be on my first vlog. We can, you could, that'll be the, the big content. Bro, tag my YouTube channel. We're trying to get all those subscriber numbers up. You know what I mean? We want right, those. We'll, we want we'll that collab, content. We'll collab. Yeah. I, we need to I'll do something like that. Cloud. There's, hey. There's money to be made on YouTube, David. This could be a side hustle. This I'm could be. This, you, could this is it. The Connor Daily vacations. and David show. Man, I, I tell you what, there'd be a lot of different vibes on that, but it could be funny. I respect it, uh, David. Real quick before I let you go, what was your favorite Olympic sport to watch over the break? Did you? Did we? Did we find any fun Olympic sports to watch? <laughs> Well, what is I mean, that so funny? No, I mean, like, listen, listen. <laughs> I'm a, I love the Olympics. No, I love the Olympics, but I'm just laughing because of the 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 break dancing one. I thought that was pretty. That was <laughs> that, was that was awesome. Hard, dude. That was hey, Ray Gun, sick, dude. Ray Gun's got a wild following now. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, Did you yeah. watch that men's final though? Because like, I thought that was one of the coolest things I've ever seen in the break dancing. No, the break dancing was actually like it was insane. It was insane. I mean, the the actual sets and the, the things that they were doing was incredible. I mean, I was like, whoa! That kind of the shocked fact that they but... all had nicknames too. I love that, like Phil Wizard, and then like w- w- one of the girls was just six one seven. Like they just had numbers, and I was yeah, like, this is incredible. It was, it was actually Did you see really the cool. Australian girl that was trying to break dance. Well, that was a good one. Well, yeah, yeah, that's what that's what we were talking about. But <laughs> that's a good I mean, one. but I also heard that you know, like now that the break dancing is like kind of in question on if it's going to return, but I hope it does because a lot it of better. the sets were actually really cool. Like it was really fun to watch. Dude, I loved it. I loved it. Well, I'm glad to know that you appreciated break dancing over anything else, whether it was archery or artistic swimming, also, whatever it is. Um, oh, I just had a brain fart. What's the Uh-oh. guy's name? Curry. Man, he Steph was. Curry, yeah, he was going crazy. That was big. That yeah. was insane. I mean, and also Noah Lyles, right? That's the name. Oof, yeah. Watch that. Yeah. That was cool. Matt, if he, like, his acceleration is a bit off, but, like, dude, he just, he goes faster. Like, everybody slows down. He just kept going faster. That was insane. I kind of sometimes want to know what my 100-meter time would be. I don't think it would be very fast, but I, no. I sometimes no. want to know. That's a good, I, yeah, I'd be interested to see. Who's the fastest 100-meter runner in IndyCar? What do you think? <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. Who could do the fastest 100 meter dash? Well, well, what kind question. of body figure would that be, though? Not Graham Rahal. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just well, line all dude, the drivers up and make him everybody do a 100 meter dash. <laughs> that's that's the move. Just line every driver up, make them that all. That would be already- so funny, actually. And, yeah, and honestly, and fans, off. please reply to this with who you think would run the fastest 100 meter dash. Yeah, that, that's, that's a good it. one. Let's let's let, let the fans decide. I probably won't be a part of it, probably because my contracts won't allow it. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to be real careful nowadays. Yeah, <laughs> knowing me, I somehow trip and break some things. So. Yeah, so no, I no. I would like to put up a suggestion for very fast runners. Um, I I think Joseph is too top heavy. He's too top heavy to be a fast runner. Um, I think low key maybe Alex Pillow or even. Linus, he's, he's, or, no, 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 hang on. Cold Herda, he's small, and he can just, he can get going. Well, I'm trying to think of who has, like, some legs, you know, some big legs. I feel like that's where yeah. it matters. Like, I know Newgarden's top-heavy, but, man, if he's explosive, you know, he can probably 
get some sprinting going. I don't know. I don't know who I has. think Shotty Matt could surprise some folks. No, he drinks too many beers. Yeah, and there's know. no shot to see a sprinter. Yeah, <laughs> no I shot to see a sprinter. <laughs> I'm trying to think who would be a good sprinter. Yeah, you, you, you immediately try to go through the build of all like the Stingray? athletes. You know, I'm thinking, you know, what about Renus BK? I could see it. I, I can I see, see that. I feel like he's yeah. kind of got that build. I feel like he could probably do it. The Dutch have some runners. We saw it. The Dutch have some runners. Anyway, let us know what it. you think. David, I appreciate you. I know you've had a long day, and uh, I don't want to extend it anymore because I know we're hungry for dinners. Uh, excited for St. Louis this weekend. Congrats on your new deal. Uh, the AJ Foyt Racing Penske Affiliation Chevrolet. Welcome to the Chevrolet team as well. You've been a Honda guy, so... Uh, that'll be very cool. And, uh, yeah, we appreciate you. The internet appreciates you. The youth appreciates you. And the IndyCar social channels appreciate you. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. All right, we appreciate David Malukas being with us. Uh, it was a last-minute ask, and we know that his announcement was today. So the fact that he fit us in, uh, we're very, very thankful for that. Chin so, show Mary. Yes, thank you, David. Um, with With that... We will get to uh, a great segment. I don't know if you've ever been here before, uh, but if this is your first time, welcome to the Ricky Treadway Random Indy 500 Driver of the Week. The greatest event of its kind that's ever been run on. Let me the drivers. We'll make up the field. This week, we went... In honor of me being number 78 this weekend, uh, this is a Chase suggestion, uh, we go to the year of 1978. Uh, not 1878 because there was no Indy 500. There yet. None. Uh, because that would have combined the car number that I was last, 18 and 78. But there was no Indy 500s happening in 1878. Um, but uh, in 1978, uh, there was a race at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and it was won by Al Unser. Uh, but we went to the 27th place finisher. We're going to learn about someone else in the Ricky Treadway Random Indy 500 Driver of the Week segment, Tom Bagley. Mm. Tom Bagley finished 27th. It uh, looks like he went out with an oil leak uh, in the 1978 Indy 500. Tom Bagley, a December man, uh, born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, um, raced in many, many things, uh, raced in Indy cars from 78 to 80, also 83, 42 career combined starts in Indy car, uh, finishing the top 10, 23 times. Yeah, that's, that's great. Uh, best finish three times of fourth position. So just off the podium, uh, USAC rookie of the year in 1978. Uh, really, really impressive. Uh, so let's see his, uh, Indy 500, uh, stats. So he did 78, 79. Uh, 1980 and 81 in uh, his best finish at the Indy 500 uh, was ninth in 1979. 81, he tried to qualify, uh, but failed to qualify. So that's uh, that's Tom Bagley. You want to know something else, else about fun Tom? that you found about him? Dude, he was a physicist. Uh, was a physicist, a was he? Yes, he was. He worked. He actually, you know, he was he was racing with PPG. Then he went to work with PPG. He that's was wild. Physicist. I see that. Yeah. Yeah, and he was developing new methods for creating powder paint. So shout out to the bag man himself. Uh, I'm wearing these these shades in honor of him in this amazing photo that I'm seeing of him from 2013. Oh, I like that. Did. There you go. So Tom Bagley went, went on to be a physicist. Smart that's guy, wild. dude. Uh, Tom Bagley's still alive, I believe, as well. So that's great. I, I I haven't seen. If he is not, boy, that would be sad. But uh, Tom Bagley's still alive. So. Right. Uh, very, very cool to know that. Love that. Um, so anyway, that's our show this week. Uh, we're going racing this weekend. So very, very excited about that. Thank you so much for listening to this show. Uh, please share it with a friend if you, if you feel like it, um, tell someone about it. Uh, we're trying to get to that next level of listenership. Just maybe a a few more consistent listeners. A rate Uh, review and subscribe. Yeah. So, so subscribe to the channel, uh, on YouTube, uh, leave us a, a, a comment about whatever you want to discuss, uh, whoever you want to see on the show. Uh, we will continue to uh, work on that. Um, David Malukas is a returning guest. David Malukas was on the show before, uh, but we haven't talked to him in a while. So I'm very excited about that. 
Uh, and obviously next week we will have the winner of the St. Louis race on this show. Uh, we are going to be fully back to having the winners on the show. Very, very excited to hear from the winner. Um, but until then, we will see you after a very successful IndyCar weekend in St. Louis. Uh, thank you and see you next week on Speed Street. Hey everyone, Connor Daly here. Please leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it. And also subscribe to the channel as well. That would be very helpful. Be a friend, tell a friend. Thank you so much for the support. And we'll see you on the next episode of Speed Street.